Hello, I'm Zach Kazan. I'm an editor with Warren and Wound, and I'm here at the Wind Up Watch Fair in Chicago, Illinois, the first ever Wind Up Watch Fair in Chicago. And I'm joined by Neil Brick from Beloba. Neil, hello, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. We're super excited to be here. Oh, well, we're, we're very glad that you're here uh, representing uh, Beloba, one of our favorite brands. Um, so you brought a selection of watches um, uh, that are that are uh, uh, Bulova branded. I was hoping you could, before we get into the watches specifically, yeah. if you could uh, give us a little bit of an overview uh, of the brand, uh, a little bit of, about Bulova's history um, and uh, and why they're important and, and why they appeal to, to watch enthusiasts. Yeah, so Bulova being one of the most prominent American brands, I think, in the history of American watchmaking. We have over 145 years of experience, which I think a lot of people don't realize. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of history of firsts. Uh, we had the first TV commercial ever, uh, which is pretty amazing to think about. And um, just with the introduction of our Archive series being doing really well, I think that really lends itself to the wind-up customer and the wind-up fair. And we couldn't be more excited to be here and introduce some really cool stuff. That yeah. I think, yeah. Um, one of the things that, you know, to me is so great about Bulova as a brand is the way that you really kind of intersperse bits of your history into your into your watch releases. I really think of it um, as a, like a very, like a New York brand. Like, yes. To me, it's like quintessentially New York, quintessentially American. Um, and that, you know, kind of comes through in the, the parking meter watch, Correct. which, uh, which is uh, just released. Uh, and the, the lined-up shop was the, the, the first, uh, you know, retailer uh, to sell this watch. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the, yeah. the parking meter? So the parking meter happened. watch is an interesting piece. Um, it was a very famous mechanical watch we've had in our archive for a long time. Collectors love it. Um, it was actually brought up in a meeting with Warren Wound in our offices that it would be a global issue. And since we heard that, we kind of went gung-ho and really started the process of doing it. Uh, the movement is hard to reenact that mechanical movement from the 70s. So what we did was we worked with Miyota, who's a proprietary part of Citizen. We did a Miyota movement that captures the heart of the parking meter, but still has some of the cool essence. So it has a inner ring bezel that has the GMT kind of function with the 12 hour uh, scale, mm -hmm. which is really fun. And the color scheme still truly original. Um, really just a kind of fun watch that anyone can now grab instead of like making it a little more limited at that price point if we brought it back into mechanical watch. Yeah, it's uh, it's really fun. There's something that like I think is kind of contemporary about it, even though it's clearly like, you know, uh, influenced by, you know, vintage designs. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bullhead specifically is something that's like really deeply rooted in a, you know, a previous generation of watch making. Uh, and then it's just such a interesting kind of like you know, way to display like a you know personality you know on the wrist like it's a it, it, it gets attention. Uh, it's a really really cool design. Let's go through some of these other yeah. uh, other watches. What else did you bring for us? So we have the Millship, which we introduced last year. Uh, one of my favorite archive pieces here. It was based off a naval contract design that we did. Uh, we were very close to completing that contract. We decided not to, and only seven I think prototypes were made. And one of our very prominent Bolivar collectors had one of them, and he came to our office and showed us the watch and. So this would be a really, really cool uh, reissue if you guys did it. So we kind of thought, yeah, that would be cool. Let's see if we can do it. And we, we stayed true to spec, which some people, you know, 16 millimeters is odd, but I think it, it really came out well. It's unique on the wrist. Um, it has that classic military design that you'll see yeah. in other brands. And um, I'm really happy with how it came out. We have two different options. If someone wants a little more special piece, there's a limited version that has a slate of movement. Uh, comes in this really cool kind of like old school scuba diver helmet. Uh, and then we have a Miyota version, which, you know, is for everyone. It's going to be in the line forever, and we're really excited about where this can go in the future as well. Yeah. I love the, is that like a bead blasting finish it on, is, the, on yeah. the case? Yeah, it's really cool. Very, uh, it feels great in the hand. And tell us about the bezel, too. The bezel yeah. is kind of an interesting was about to, Yeah, so the bezel is really cool. So it's not a generic uh, just turn uh, unidirectional bezel. It's a bi-directional bezel that you push down and you can go back and forth, which yep. is really interesting and cool. Another cool thing about the limited version is it has a full loom bezel versus the original one has a more true to spec, or the Miyoto version has just your full loom dial with the bezel being uh, basic. But the limited one being special because the full loom bezel re recreates the kind of radium plating of the bezel in the, in the past. Uh, yeah, it's a really great vintage throwback. Yep. Um, and so the this uh, this indicator at the at six o'clock position mm -hmm. here, that indicates moisture, moisture ingress in the, correct. the case. And right? it is an actual working indicator on the modern watches, which you yeah. don't really get to see that very much in modern interpretation of watches. Yeah, and we've seen that yeah. you know pop up in other watches and it's just you know there for, for, for decoration sure. yeah. sometimes, but that will actually tell you if it there's will. moisture in the case. And if there's moisture in the case, 
you got to bring it to a, a watchmaker like, yes. right away, right? It's, it's yes. kind of the enemy of a yes. an enemy of the watch. Is, uh, is uh, what what else can you can you show? So us? we also have the new A11 hack. It's a 37 millimeter version of the hack that everyone knew and loved previously. Mm -hmm. We did it in this amazing blue dial with a red second that really pops. Yeah, I'm really proud of this piece. It kind of echoes more toward the tr traditional size of the previous hack uh, that was used in World War II and yep. that was issued in the military. So. Really love this one. The case back also has kind of like a cool military uh, case back. Yep. And um, I'm just really, really proud of it. It's got 18 millimeter lugs. You can change straps all day. Uh, hacking movement. Really, yep. really cool. Uh, it's a, it's a very legible dial, obviously with the high contrast. Yeah. Numerals. And I think it, it's really important to to point out that the size of this watch or how appropriate that is for the yes. type of watch uh, that we're dealing with. This is like this is a, a true field watch, a military. Hundred uh, percent. You know, field watch. Uh, I think a lot of times in the you know kind of current landscape of the watch industry, we think of military watches as being these big bruising sports watches. But really, what you want is something that's Sleek, discreet, yeah. stays out of the way. Exactly. That's what a 37 millimeter watch is is going to do. You could really imagine someone using this in like the oh, yeah. most difficult environment imaginable. For sure. Yeah. So along with that one, continuing with a smaller watch theme, I guess we also brought this Accutron watch over here. So Accutron. Obviously, it was a subset of the Bulova brand back in the early 60s, 70s, and um, it's become kind of our more higher-end brand now. Yep. Uh, we do Legacy Collection, which is one-to-one -one recreations of famous watches in our past. This is the Railroad with the Zero at 12, so it was used for conductors of railroad engines. And this is one of my favorite ratios we do. You can see it's 34 millimeters. It sits really well. That white dial with the orange second hand is amazing. Yep. The case back also has a little bit of history on it. You can see the Salida movement inside. Um, really cool stuff here. I'm really proud of how this came out. Yeah, the uh, you can tell that the finishing on the case is really top notch. The, the visible facets, yeah, the crisp transitions, uh, you know, from one facet to the next. Um, it's really nice. So, what's the size of this watch? Thirty four. Thirty four. Yeah, it's still you know even though it's a smaller dial, still highly legible. Yeah. Um, yeah, wonderful watch. And of course, the the railroad history is important to watchmaking in general. Yep. Uh, and Accutron in particular. Uh, so that's great. Where where do you see the the interest coming from? Uh, you know, from Bulova to Accutron. What? The, how does the the customer kind of like differ from one brand? Yeah. So Accutron is thoroughly an enthusiast brand. Yeah. Um, it's a higher end brand for us, so the price point kind of lends itself there. But even in of itself, with the Legacy Collection and the Space Wheel that we introduced in 2020. Um, it's for enthusiasts, it's by enthusiasts, it's a conversation piece. Yep. Uh, it's really, that's kind of where we land. Um, with Bulova, we kind of run the gamut. Um, you'll see us anywhere from department stores all the way to Warren Wound and higher end shops as well. Yep. Um, the archive piece specifically is kind of like where we cater to enthusiasts. Yep. Uh, that's kind of where we like to have fun and go to town on vintage reissues that we think would be benefit the community today. So that's kind of where I love to play. Um, the department store stuff is great, and it has a place, but the archive kind of is where my heart is. So yeah. you'll see some, obviously the parking meter came out today at the shop, at the fair, and um, the bill ship came out last year, and there's some really cool stuff to come, so keep your eye out. Yeah, we'll definitely keep our eye out. Uh, what else do you want our viewers and listeners to know uh, about Volvo? Like what, what else uh, uh, What else can, would you like to, to share with our uh, with Yeah, so just, Volvo is a great brand. It's got American history, um, if you want, legit American heritage and your watchmaking. There's very few brands out there that haven't moved over to Switzerland or are doing certain things that are not conducive to what American watchmaking used to be. Um, so we're really excited to continue that tradition. Uh, our brand manager, Michael, likes to say that for 146 years, someone's come in in the New York office and opened the door on January 2nd. And that's pretty cool. I mean, we've gone through two world wars, the depression. Um, so there's more to come, and we're super excited for the future. Yeah, that's very cool. There's so much history with the brand, and just think about the amount of time that the brand has been operating in the United States. Um, there's so many different like watchmaking styles, you yeah. know, that we've seen come and go in that time. So it's a just a huge opportunity for uh, for you know vintage issues and really interesting designs. To, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, you know, so hope you enjoy the here. rest of the show. Uh, this has been great. Yeah. This is awesome. Thanks so much, man. Thank you.